everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm out on another adventure and this time it's to test out the video camera capabilities on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So if you've been curious about what it looks like, how good the 4K works, the 60 frames per second, all those great things, you're gonna find out today in this video while my lovely wife, ta-da, also YouTuber Sarah J. Awesome, uh, are gonna go out and do some vlogging with the uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. So let's check it out. First and foremost, this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It has three cameras on the back, all three of them 12 megapixel. It has a 12 megapixel primary, telephoto, and wide angle, and then the front selfie camera is, you guessed it, 12 megapixels. I shot this entire video in 4K using the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and these shots here are from the 12 Pro, which has the same primary shooter. So I started shooting footage for this and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm really hungry and what better way to test a camera than after I've eaten some enchiladas. So the first stop on our list of places to go today is actually one of my most favorite Mexican food restaurants. We haven't had any of this in a while. Actually, we haven't had it since 2020. So going down the street to have some fantastic Tex-Mex and we're gonna enjoy that. And maybe I'll shoot some of that in the video too. I'd rather get the, uh, the main process. If that's what you want. That's what I want. Okay. <laughs> what we have here is the best chili con queso ever invented on the face of the planet, which I'm looking forward to eat because I haven't had it in almost a year. So this will be good. And this is a shameless plug just because I love Blackberry, but I have my fancy Blackberry Porsche with me and yes. Here are the enchiladas and they were delicious as ever. So if you ever make it down to the greater Houston area, make sure you look up a place called Tortillas. It is delicious. Now, of course I ate all that food, so it's best to go shopping after you have a full stomach so you don't buy everything in the store because, okay, I'm gonna lie, I did that anyway. Uh, I bought lots of stuff. <laughs> I bought a whole lot of things that didn't even constitute meals, but by gosh, I've got cookies and cake. But this is just some more, uh, test footage with the iPhone 12. I wanted to go out and show you a lot of the video footage in normal, real life situations. So here you can see me selecting an onion from the vegetable department. And also the seafood here looks so good. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos lately, especially the vlogs, you've probably figured out by now that there's a reason that I'm fat. I like food. And of course, Thanksgiving time at the grocery store is like the best time ever to get anything. So this is interesting. Some of y'all may not have seen this in a while. Some of you may have 40,000 rolls on your shelves, but as you can see at our grocery store, we have plenty of toilet paper. Now that I've shown you Mexican food and pretty much everything in the grocery store, including toilet paper, it's probably best to go spend some time actually talking about some of the technical characteristics and capabilities of the iPhone 12 Pro Max camera. So this is 4K at 60 frames per second. I wanted to go ahead and do some walking around outside just like with some of my other camera tests that I do. So you can get a real world feel for one, the image stabilization, two, what it sounds like outside with the microphone, and three, just so you can get a feel for what it looks like in general. I think that the video recording capabilities on here are good. Uh, it does do the 4K at 60 frames per second on the front and the back, which I am a really big fan of. You can do HDR with Dolby Vision, which is nice, but it does that at the efficiency mode. If you wanna shoot that way, it also records in JPEG as well. So there are different ways that you can use it. I think that it's very versatile. It does a lot of really good things, and I think that it looks pretty crispy. I don't know, what do you think? Look pretty good? Now, uh, when you're recording and trying to zoom in, you can see the moon way up there. It will allow you to zoom in to three times zoom and then you can zoom back out. Now, the optical zoom only does two and a half. The extra, I guess, half a zoom is the digital working with the optical because of the telephoto lens. So you've got that going on. And then uh, if you stop the recording, which I'll do here, I'll start another recording, hold on. Now we have it at seven times zoom. So if you start off the video with it already zoomed into seven times, it'll let you back out to two and a half and then zoom back into seven. So the optical takes you to two and a half but once you extend into the zoom, if you start recording that way, you can do it all the way up to seven and then back down to two and a half. So that's kind of neat as well. 
And one last thing I'm sure y'all wanna know about is the wide angle camera. You can record with the wide angle camera. So you can use all three cameras whenever you're recording, either wide angle, normal primary shooter, or telephoto. When you have it on wide angle, it'll let you zoom in up to one and a half times and then you can zoom back out to 0.5. So there's a lot of different quirks to know with regard to the zooms and what you can zoom to and zoom out to while you're shooting, but I do like that it gives you the flexibility to be able to do that. So I figured I would go ahead and test out the motion blur as well with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And you can see that right now with the sun and the HDR is really not flattering with the uh, the shade that's going on with my face here it's not <laughs> not this uh this color normally here's the front end of the camera while i'm sitting here on the swing i wanted to show this off so you can get a nice feel just for how it, well it handles recording while you're in motion and doing things so i think that it handles this pretty well you can see the nice light reflections in the lens as well which i think is pretty cool and no video test would be complete without a slow-mo test it does do 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. So you can choose your fancy, however you want to do that. But I think that it works pretty well. You can see here between the swing and then all the stuff I picked up and that I'm dropping. It handles it really well. And just note that if you do shoot in slow-mo, it drops it to either 1080p or you can option it for 720, but no 4K for slow-mo. Now the cameras on the iPhone 12 Pro Max are nice. They are definitely, I think, in the pro category, especially when you talk about the fact that you can get 4K at 60 frames per second on the front camera and on the primary shooter. I think that that's really nice because a lot of people more than ever are going out and using their smartphones for content creation, for video capturing, for pretty much anything that involves using a video camera. So being able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second, it goes all the way down to 720p. It does that at 30 frames per second. It doesn't do 60. I don't know why. I guess maybe they didn't see the value in that, but it does do 1080p at 60 and 30 frames per second. You can even do 24 frames per second if you want that cinematic touch to it. So. I do like that they did that. Uh, when you look at the front facing selfie camera right here, it's what you see is what you get. I mean, you can't go and like zoom in or anything if you wanna touch the screen and adjust it, it's fixed. But when you shoot with the primary camera on the back end, it works in conjunction with the different lenses. So you can go from one time zoom to three time zoom in the middle of recording, which I think is nice. You can turn that option off in the settings if you want and lock the cameras, but I think it's probably in most settings going to be to your benefit, unless you just don't wanna accidentally do that in the middle of recording. One other thing is I really wish that you could flip between the cameras while you're recording. Some Android phones will allow you to do that. This one will not. So while you're recording, you can't be shooting on the primary camera and then flip it to the selfie camera like I'm talking now and then flip it back. So maybe one day that will be a pro enough feature to include uh, moving forward, but as of right now, it's not. Also, you can shoot in 10-bit video at with HDR. Really cool there because you get the Dolby Vision, HDR, 10-bit. You get 1 billion colors in your color spectrum whenever you're recording stuff. When it comes to 8-bit video, you get 16 million colors, and you would think that that would be plenty. That's like, okay, 16 million colors. I can't even think of all the names for those or the different shades. I, I can't tell you 25 colors, but when it comes to what your eyes see and what's displayed on the video, it's really important to have those extra colors because it makes it look more true to life. There are a lot more colors in the world than you actually imagine that there are, especially whenever it comes to color reproduction on a screen and you need to be able to capture that whenever you're shooting. So the 10 bit video, really special and it helps out a lot. The biggest way you can tell is when it comes to color gradient. So like if you look up at the sky and you see the sun and it's setting and you see all those different yellows and oranges, if you don't have the 10 bit color, you have eight bit color, or if you have lower than that, then you'll see like little blocked areas as it changes in the color shift. But the higher quality video with the 10 bit gives you those extra colors to fill that in so it looks just nice and smooth and seamless like it does in real life as opposed to just taking a look at it later on video. One of the last things I want to do with this video test is check out the low light uh, capability. So a lot of people like to come out and shoot video whenever it's less than ideal lighting. It's not perfectly dark outside, but I wanted to illustrate you can see it looks pretty darn crispy. And when you get a lot of video cameras on phones, especially in like low light and things like that, 
uh, it can start to look less uh, sharp, more grainy, not as clear. And I think this does a really good job of handling the light or lack of light thereof. And uh, you can see that even when there are light sources, it doesn't seem to be causing any issues with how the uh, sensor and the camera handles it. So overall, uh, I'd say that this is a, uh, they did a pretty good job with this. All right, folks, that's all she wrote for this camera test for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I didn't make you too hungry. <laughs> Sorry about all the food stuff, but really what I wanted to do, like I said, I wanted to go out and get some real world footage, not just all this controlled environment, what you're going to see in real life. So if you go take this out, if you're at a grocery store, if you're out on the road, if you're outside, even in low light settings. So hopefully this has been helpful for you to give you an idea of what this camera is capable of and some of the features that it has in the phone. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.